Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the committee. My name's Ron Nate. I'm the president of the Idaho Freedom Foundation. And uh, I'll be frank to begin with, HJR2 is a bad idea. HJR2, not only that, is very ill-timed. Our country is swimming in national debt. Our national debt is $34.3 trillion. That's $102,000 per person, not per taxpayer, per person. That's like half a million dollars for a family of five of national debt. Uh, all across the country, total state debt adds up to $1.3 trillion. And yes, Idaho does carry some debt, short-term debt, during tax years. All local debt adds up to $2.4 trillion. The debt to GDP ratio in the federal government is 123%. No country has endured that kind of debt without a serious financial crash of their monetary system. The state wants to incur debt this year for the facilities bill, House Bill 521, if I may mention another bill. That would incur $1 billion worth of debt, either paid back by the schools or the state. And we ought to wait for the impact on that before we decide whether we should lower the threshold for local governments to incur even more debt. This makes it too easy for local governments to incur debt. Interest rates are on the rise. Families are hurting, and the supermajority threshold exists for a reason. This would allow just 55% of, of voters to impose higher taxes on their, fellow voter, on their fellow neighbors. It is a violation of property rights when taxes are tied to your property. Nobody really owns their property under those circumstances. We ought to avoid any potential increases in property taxes. And I'll point out that the Failure rate of the bonds mentioned by Representative Furness is not actually accurate. If a bond fails twice and then passes on the third time, I wouldn't call that 33%. I'd call that 100%, and you probably have a better bond as a result. Now, there's two technical problems I'm with this bill, but I see I'm out of yeah, time. I know. Finish your so, thought, though. Okay. The two technical problems with this bill are, number one, there are five proposed constitutional amendments this year in the legislature. The four other constitutional amendments show a fiscal note of two hundred dollars to $300,000 for putting the question on the ballot. The fiscal note on this one says zero. That's a problem. Legislators ought to be voting on clear and accurate fiscal notes. I'm going to stop you there. Okay. So yeah. I have one more technical issue, but I'll, I'll field questions. Are, does somebody want to ask him about his technical issue? <laughs> Thank you, Representative Price. You know, I just don't, I don't want to get into this thing Fair where you're enough. my favorite, so I give you more time, and I get that's it. my I get deal, it, totally. right? Representative Price. Thank you, Madam Chair and Mr. Nate. Will, will you please explain the technical <laughs> problem? <laughs> Madam, <laughs> yes. Madam Chair, Representative, thank you for picking up on the cue, and I'll be very brief. Thank you. The bill has a te technical problem on page 2, line 35. It has the word or in there, um, specifying the constitutional question. That is in contradiction to page 1, line 21, that uses the word and. So this will be confusing for voters. If that is the constitutional question, the voter may think that they're choosing between a 60% threshold and a 55% threshold, but the question given to them will be yes versus no. It should say and on page two. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Other questions? Seeing none. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you, Representative Price.